Hi everyone, Ella here, Community Manager at Core Angels. Uh, welcome to the second part of um, our tokenization series, the 11th um, installment of Business Angels Talks, our online monthly webinars for, uh, for Business Angels. Uh, if you'd like to see our previous Business Angels Talks, head over to coreangels.com slash coreangelsevents um, or check out our YouTube channel. This is where we have all the recorded sessions. Uh, now I'd like to welcome our host, Pedro Bandeira, co-founder and board member of Core Angels. Thank you, Ella, uh, and thank you, Yale, for being with us and sharing it all with us. Um, it's, it's valuable knowledge, and, uh, and uh, our angels deserve that, you know, that knowledge for them to decide with the way to go and to understand better the risks and the pros of, uh, of, of Going tokenized when investing in startups. Let's go. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm very happy. Well, good afternoon, to everybody, and thank you very much for the invitation. I'm really happy to be with you at the second part of the the session. Uh, today uh, we are going to share a lot of use case just to go. Let's say just to show how to what is a token. <laughs> Um, and how tokenization is used in the, I mean, by companies to to find new ways to get funding and also to find new liquidity. I mean, to 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 offer more liquidity to all the invest investments. Okay, so let me share the the screen. Just uh, let me know when you see it, please. Hmm. Can you see can you see the screen yes, yes. perfect right perfect. okay so just a very brief brief presentation for those of you that were not the first session uh, i am jay lockning i am the ceo the founder and ceo of token city token city is a is a company that provides all the technical and also regulatory infrastructure to help companies to issue their tokens to manage their tokenized assets and also to trade I mean, to create the markets where those tokens are traded. Uh, my background is initially technical. I am an engineer. Then I worked for many years as a consultant. And also then I, I work in tech companies. And then I start my own company. And the last company that I uh, started before, right before Token City, it was a crowdfunding company. And it was this crowdfunding company, the first uh, infrastructure that I used to make the the first STO, security token offering, regulated STO. Uh, so the platform, the first one that was made through a regulated platform in Spain, and it was that in, it was in in 2018, like five years ago already. And then after that, I I created Token City, and then we have, I mean, in, in 2020, and, and we are working hard on that. And today I'm going to show you some of uh, our uh, use cases of tokenization with real clients. It, it, all the cases that we are going to share today are, are real cases of real clients. Okay. So the session today is planned as it follows. It's like a very brief recall, the recap of the last uh, session, and then directly to use cases. So uh, Starting from the beginning, a token is a digital representation of an economic right. So you take the technology, which is blockchain, you digitize any economic right into the blockchain, you fractionalize this right, each unity is the token, and then this token is in the hand of the investors. And this format makes it really much easier for the investors to trade the, the tokens. There are many different kinds of tokens. In this slide, you can see all the variety of i mean of uh, uh, digital assets and tokens on the left you see what it's called i mean here is all mix what is called cryptocurrencies and also tokens but let me explain you the difference on the left you can see what we call cryptocurrencies or native uh, crypto and these uh, units are like the 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 native unit of any blockchain network. For example, Bitcoin 
for the network Bitcoin. It is uh, Ether for Ethereum and like this. So this is what is traditionally called cryptocurrency. There are other kind of currencies, uh, I mean, cryptocurrencies that are uh, that come from the tokenization of traditional money or from the creation of tokens that represent uh, the money. I mean, there are tokens that represent or that uh, keep up um, a part with uh, the dollar, for example. There are, those are called stable coins. And one token, it is the, it is one token, it is like one dollar, for example, or what to one token is like one euro. And then you have a huge universe of uh, other kind of tokens that represent very many, many different kind of value or assets or utility rights or economic rights, everything. Why? Because this blockchain technology, some of the network, I mean, this technology allowed to create a code uh, what is called what are called a smart contracts and those this code allow anyone to create these tokens or units of value and for example in these uh, kind of tokens we usually hear about utility tokens those tokens are tokens that represent a right to use something then you have the um, nfts uh, the nfts are tokens that are unique and are used for example in art and then you have what are called digital assets. And digital assets are tokens that represent like traditional assets, uh, re usually represent uh, economic rights or shares or loans or um, all the, uh, what is called real world assets that are digitized uh, through, uh, I mean, in blockchain through the process which is called tokenization. And what can be tokenized? And here is when I really start with different use case for you, I mean, to to, to really like uh, capture the value of this technology and mainly how you can use this technology for your own company. So you see that uh, you can tokenize almost anything. And here I will show you example of a utility token, exclusive rights, you can tokenize loans. You can tokenize future earnings in many ways. You can tokenize some way shares from limited companies. I will show you also an example. Uh, you can tokenize from uh, a few weeks. You can tokenize shares from public companies, also bonds any kind of financial instruments since last March can be tokenized in Spain with completely legal, uh, I mean, coverage. You can tokenize funds and you also can tokenize investment and the participation in investment groups. So let's start with the first case. So here is an example of a utility token. It is one of our clients, uh, which is called Waze. And um, what have they tokenized? They have tokenized the Camino de Santiago. I don't know. I don't know if you have done El Camino de Santiago, but they have created an application uh, to allow all the pilgrims uh, to. I mean, they have created this application to incentivize the economy around the Camino de Santiago. So on one side, they provide services, for example. They organize all the logistics around the, the, the uh, uh, I don't know how you say, peregrine or... I don't. So, for example, you can go uh, through, the way, through the way and you can uh, buy in any store and they organize for you all the logistics to send you the, all the, the items that you, that you bought uh, directly to your house so you don't have to wear it. And they have created a token, which is called the Pilgrim. And this token, uh, uh, they have created as an incentive that they give to the pilgrims uh, when they achieve milestones. Milestones that um, uh, allow them like, to take a better profit of the ways. So for example, if you achieve uh, uh, different milestones 
they offer you uh, pilgrims that then you can use when you visit a monument or when you buy in a in a store or wherever okay so this utility token is a way to i mean to create community around all the around the the, the i mean all the pilgrims and also to incentivize all the economy around the, the ways so another case this case is an nft and this is for example uh um a token that has been offered by a non-profit uh, non-profit uh, organization that is called women in a legal world and they wanted to create nfts for all the members of the organization so for all the ambassador of the organization they wanted to offer them a unique item that recognize them as an ambassador of the organization and also they are creating like series or nfts collection nfts collection for all the seminars that they organize so uh, all the participants in the seminar are collecting the nfts and then later they can use it for certain benefits of the organization now we start going to the digital assets because nfts and utility uh, tokens are tokens but digital assets as i said is tokens that represent different kind of economic rights so for example here is a loan this company in replay games is this company that i mentioned you that it was the first issue that we did in in 20 in 2018 and then uh, last year in 2022 we we did another one but the, in both cases, uh, what we did is we, we tokenized a loan, specifically a convertible loan. What that means, what we did is that when you tokenize a loan, let's say uh, uh, this company raised, well, last time it was one million and a half, that this one, like 200,000. So imagine that you fractionalize this 200,000 and you create 200 tokens. That means that each investor that buy a token this token is a credit right that they hold in their mobile phone that means that the company uh, has to give them back one dollar with certain interest and also with i mean all the conditions uh, uh, etc but as it is a convertible loan this token means also the right to convert to one share of the company so in this way uh, the, what is what is holding the investor is a potential right to hold an, uh, uh, an, a share in the company but this token is more liquid than holding the shares itself so um, the first issues that we did uh, we make let's say a simple convertible note but the last one in 2022 uh, the token that we created it, it wasn't only uh, it, it wasn't provided only the right to convert into a share. It was also possible with this token to convert into the utility tokens that the company was going to issue and also to convert that money into the next NFTs of the of the game because it is a, game, a gaming company and they are uh, creating NFTs that represent the, the digital um, digital assets of the game, cars and I mean all the all the um, uh, uh, digital yeah, uh, <laughs> assets. So this economic right, this token could be converted also into the NFTs. So it was very like interesting this experience because we found that they were um, addressing different, very different uh, um, targets of uh, investors. Uh, from one side, we had investors that said, okay, I only want shares of the company. And you say, okay, so here you have a convertible note, you have the right to hold shares. And on the other side, you had investors that said, okay, I don't want to hear anything about shares. What I want is a utility token. Okay, so here you have the convertible note and the money that you are investing today, you will be able to convert it to the utility token tomorrow. We need, we, we need this money today to be able to develop the utility token. So they had um, like a security and they had the, 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 um, 
Uh, I mean, they were sure that they will be able, they were signing a contract today that will be able to, they will provide them the right to obtain what they wanted in the future and they went uh, allowing the company to uh, to go uh, through this uh, way. Okay, uh, another use case. Here we are already uh, entering the, I mean, the different kind of contract and tokens that uh, are usually made to to allow investors to participate in, in future earning. Uh, for example, this is an example of a, a company that hired our white label solution to develop their own branded uh, platform to issue their tokens. So it is a, a real estate companies, they are um, developing different uh, real estate projects and for each one of them, they want to funding directly from their community so they use the platform to show the project, to sell the tokens, to get the money, to fund the, the, the real estate infrastructure. So in this case, what is very usual is to sign contracts that in Spain are called, I don't know internationally how they are called, but in Spain it's, it's called like cuenta en participación. That means that the investor put the money and then participate in the, in the future and earning, like in, for example, in, in, in rent, or when the when the um, real estate infrastructure is sold in the future in the earning so usually uh, all these clients are formalizing or tokenizing cuentas en participación or they are tokenizing what is called participatory loans that which is similar to uh, it is it, it is a mix uh, way of doing uh, participating in the earning and also participating in, I mean, uh, holding some loan rights, okay, credit rights. This is another example. Uh, it is also a, a white level. And in this case, the, the company is using the platform to fund uh, movies. So in this case, particular case they are using loan, uh, participatory loans but it's also very very often in this field to use this kind of participation in the future earning of the of the movies and all this is tokenized in the same way so you 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 fractionalize the right and you you provide part of those rights as tokens to the investors that uh, invest in the in the project and this is a bit different because, well, it's also a white level for a company that is issuing token, but in this case, they are making investors to participate in the future royalties of the authors, okay? So this is music and it's in the music uh, industry. So here is another case that, um, uh, as I said, is it possible to tokenize uh, um, shares from limited companies. Um, not exactly uh, the token represent exactly the share because um, at least in Spain and in many other countries, uh, for the I mean for the for, for, for the authorities to recognize that you have transferred your share, you need to go to the notary and register the transaction. Uh, so even if you had a token and you sold the token, just the fact of selling the token is not enough to, I mean, to guarantee that you sold the economic right related or the asset related to that token. So what we we have done with Token City and we, well, specifically now we are tokenizing the uh, rights associated with being a shareholder in the company, which is very similar, but it's not exactly the same. Each investor, each shareholder has a number of tokens that represent the, their number of shares. And this token allow, allow this investor to make it really much, much easier to transfer the, their shares because it digitalized all that process. So it creates a space, a private market in which 
uh, all these investors can, I mean, um, organize all the rights as investors, the information rights and the rights to show, I mean, to offer their share for selling and to uh, bid for uh, buying the share of anyone else. Uh, all these kind of operations, uh, it is done much easier. And also many other benefits related to being, uh, I mean, that are, the, uh, adre I mean, the, the, which the goal is to uh, create community around the, all the investors, like uh, benefits to uh, participate in the events and all these kind of uh, things. Now, going to the shares, shares from public companies or, I mean, Sociedades Anónimas. I don't know if there is a, a better way to say that in English, Sociedad Anónima. Anyone know how to say that in better than public company because it's corporate shares. Okay, so from last March, corporate shares can be a digital, I mean, a natively represented in blockchain. Um, the law was changed last March, and now it is like exactly, the. it has exactly the same uh, legal validity, um, a title of a share, or what is called anotaciones en cuenta. Uh, uh, maybe you can help me also with this word. I don't know how to say it. It's like um, uh, what is represented by uh, central depositories that say that you hold that number of shares. Okay. So, in the same way, you can register the shares in blockchain and it has from the last uh, March, exactly the same validity. So um, this is a, a project that we, uh, that we, I mean, that we did through our regulated platform uh, uh, a few months ago. It's not, it was, it's not tokenized uh, yet because the, the load wasn't, uh, I mean, in place yet, but we, uh, we helped them to raise the, the money and we will tokenize it. Uh, but what they and in this case it represents the um, the shares of a company that is a um, um, a fan a uh, art fund. Uh, why is so important the fact that you can now in the law to tokenize shares and loans and funds? Um, this is another example. There is a it is um a stock market complete completely managed in blockchain this is completely new also the the law that um allow to operate this way um enter into operations last march this is called pilot regime and it allow to operate a, a stock market completely in in blockchain why is this very important? Uh, it is very important because you can see on the right side of the slide, you can see in blue, uh, I mean, you can see all the intermediaries that participate in the issuance and, and trading of uh, shares in the market. And you can see in uh, soft gray, all the intermediates that disappear with this infrastructure operating in blockchain. So, what it means to make all these uh, intermediates to disappear, that make it much um, accessible for companies to go to be listed, and also for the investors from anywhere worldwide to participate in, I mean, to invest from any, any place in the world, okay? So this is a, 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 also a, a real case. We we have just we are we, we will next week start all the uh, pilots with the with the stock market commission in Spain CNMV uh, for the first I mean exchange uh, to trade this kind of shares and loan and funds uh, completely in in blockchain. And now for the investment and the investment group. This is um, a company, an example of a company that is called, is an investor group. It's called Filao. Uh, and they they are a group of investors that uh, they invested in, in, in Token City in the last 
uh, round that we did. And they did it in a very, 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 I mean, a special way because they did it through a DAO or Lao, because uh, Lao is, it's called Lao because there is a, a company, a legal company. Uh, it's backed by a legal company. So it is a group of investors. And for you to understand how, how the process work, uh, we made a presentation to them because they, they wanted to explore the project. So we made them the presentation. And right after that, we finished the presentation, they enter here to the screen that you can uh, see here into a um, platform that is uh, called Snapshot. And they connect their wallet and they vote and uh, they vote with their token and they decided if they were going to invest uh, or not. So they are an investor group that is organized as a DAO and this organization allowed them much more, let's say, participatory practice uh, on the decision process when they are investing in a company or not. And also when they gather the, the money from investors, um, all these investors can transfer the money also in blockchain. They can, they can transfer their cryptocurrency for payments and they also can invest in different uh, uh, digital projects in the ecosystem buying tokens from those uh, projects this is very new it's not regulated in for example in order to do that they had to create their their company in wyoming it is not regulated in spain not in non neither in, in in europe um so uh, it's a very very new uh form of, of operations even mika that was recently mika is a <laughs> the regulation that uh, has recently, uh, last week, approved by the European Union, Union uh, to, I mean, to regulate cryptocurrencies. So even Mika, that is completely new, uh, didn't include DAOs in the regulation. It is uh, they will do it in what they call Mika two. On the next uh, law that they will uh, develop, it will be included, but uh, not uh, yet. So there are different ways you have to, if you are planning to operate in uh, using this, I mean, in, in a way similar to a DAO, uh, usually you need to combine uh, like legal, um, uh, um, I mean, uh, um, a model, a legal model that is a combination of all the uh, examples that I showed you uh, before. So those were the examples I don't want to, I mean, to go deeper, I, probably you have a lot of questions, so I'm happy to hear you and to answer, I mean, anything, any question that you may have. All right. Thank you very much, Yael. Um, so we'll move to the questions. We already have a list of questions here. I also have several questions myself. So uh, one very, very, um straightforward question is you know what benefits are for investors who tokenize their assets versus investors who doesn't like why should i tokenize my investment in startups yeah for example um we were we, we had a, a conversation last week with one of the main uh, investment banks in latin america it is from brazil and we we had a meeting with them and they were interested in uh, offer their investors their clients the possibility to invest in this kind of uh, tokenized shares why because in a very 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 simple way they can provide them with a with a with, a, with an asset an investment way to immediately and with the, without bureaucracy and wherever to invest in these kind of assets. And for example, they were interested in what? So see, I mean, they were interested in offer their investors the possibility to buy tokens that are um, traded in a regulated tokenized stock market, which is immediate. And at the same time, they wanted to combine it with a mechanism to provide the, the visa, a gold visa, to those investors. So in a very, very simple way, someone that is in Latin America 
can invest their, because they, they were already doing that, half a million or one million to invest, let's say, in real estate, in that case, in tokenized real estate, and to, to buy shares or to provide a loan so they have their investment, it's completely sure. And at the same time, they are obtaining the gold visa. So this is the kind of, I mean, the kind the, the, the kind of uses that you can see. For example, in, in small companies, in limited companies, uh, in limited companies, uh, the example that I show you with, uh, uh, with Token City or any company that tokenize as far as it's possible, uh, the shares of the company. What happens when you invest in a small company? You don't have any liquidity. And if you want to sell your shares, uh, okay, you have to, you have to um, find yourself the, the other person that is interested in, in, uh, to buy it. But even if, I mean, you want to do that, you don't have any place to do that. So it's not that easy. You need to go to speak to the administrator of the company. Maybe the administrator, okay, it has the obligation to do it. Okay, it has the obligation, but maybe it's not as quick as you would like. And with this process, you can very, very easily to create a market, a private market, at which all the investors are connected and they very easily, they can just list their token to say, okay, I want to, it is a token, but okay, I want to sell 20 shares so I just connect my wallet and I say, I want to sell 20, I, I, I connect 20 tokens. And I want, if that means I want to put to sell 20 shares for that price. And in the same platform, another investors can go there, can see all the offers and can trade and can sign the contract or can sign the transaction to say, okay, I want to, I want to buy it. And very easily. Now, still you need to go to the nursery. That's true. We still need some time to avoid also this procedure. But at least you are providing a new, I mean, a new way of doing it, at least a little bit more agile. Uh, in the case, for example, of the exchange that I show you, in only one, uh, when you operate in a market, you need to go to your broker. Then your broker, you, you need to, I mean, uh, provide instructions to your broker to buy or sell in the market. Uh, and then it's going to buy. And then you, depending on the kind of uh, financial instrument, but then you need to wait to be paid or you need to pay in advance to buy some uh, 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 financial instruments. In, when, the, when the market is operated in, in blockchain, you don't need to go to the broker because you can operate in the market directly as a small investor from anywhere in the world and the transaction is immediate. So all the settlement of the transaction is done immediately. So this is all these kind of right. advantages uh, that you can, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can thanks. Have. You know, it, it, it looks like it is simpler. Of course, of course, if we uh, we want to build an exchange, an exchange for, you know, for shares is super regulated and yeah. uh, with a lot of intermediaries, like you said, uh, and for tokens, it is not yet. No, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is yeah, regulated. You know, it, is regula already. it is regulated, but not with a lot of intermediaries like it no. is in the, you know, in, uh, for public companies, no. but the, in the stock market. But it is not uh, that complex yet. We, you know, we just we just don't know how how it look will look like in twenty years exactly. or so, right? Exactly. Let's see. Let's. But but anyway, is is anyhow tokenization of assets different for small versus large investors? Okay, okay. So it is exactly the same. The question is that uh, it, it, it I mean it is um, more convenient for small investors. What I mean is that as an involved uh, as an small investors, uh, you can participate in. Uh, big investment opportunities that are tokenized. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able because you needed a, a ticket for entrance very high. But if it is tokenized, you as an small investors, you can participate of those opportunities too. But for a, a big investor, for a huge uh, investor, 
uh, if you tokenize, if you if you invest in a tokenized uh, asset, then that this investment is also more liquid because you can easily, more easily to resell part of this investment, so you can exit also more easily. Okay, so a very specific question here, like a person that invested uh, in a movie um, at Ula Hoop, so when that person sells those, those tokens, um, those gains will appear in his or her wallet or in the bank account? Okay, it can be done bo in both ways. So it depends on how the the investors and the issuer want to organize that and how it, it can be done in both ways the investors that let's say when, the, when they are going to receive their money back they can receive for example stable coins payments in a stable coin in their wallet or they can directly receive the money in their bank account because what they are doing is that they are just uh, selling their token so the token goes from their let's say their wallet to the wallet of the issuer again or it's burned or whatever how it's defined it depends on how it's defined but then the payment for that uh, the, the selling of that token can be done in many different ways uh, you can be paid in cryptocurrency you can be paid in stable coins you can be paid in fiat if you want okay so it really depends. It is important for you to understand the way it works before investing, so you sure. know what will happen in the end. Usually, okay. when for all these issues, usually all these conditions are explained in the white paper. In the white right. paper, all the operational, I mean, uh, procedures are explained there for the Very investors. Very important to, to read. Is not I agree. Next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so can you give a general idea about the cost, for example, of tokenizing a, a Sociedad Anonima company, a corporation, or or to tokenize an angel fund to invest like in 25 startups? That's a, a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it is a very difficult, very, very difficult question because every tokenization can be different depending on, it is not only that, uh, 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 making the uh, smart contract or creating the the infrastructure in it's really it, it really depends on the on the asset but just for you to 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 have like a general idea of the cost uh for example in our case for a company that is creating this infrastructure to to own their own uh, token launcher their own platform uh, for selling the token we usually the average is that we charge around 20,000 for the setup and there are is and then an issuance fee that is among uh, 0 0.1 and 1% of the amount of money issued so this is a standard price for a company that is created their own infrastructure not just for the tokenization the tokenization uh, uh, is um, uh, uh, i mean a uh, red um, uh, yes, uh, a smaller amount for the for, yes for the uh, smart contract, or and then for the market. Then when you when you go to a to a stock market, a regulated stock market, um, for example, if you want to um, to list your company in a traditional uh, stock market, probably for all the initial procedures to to go public, you're going to invest like at least 200,000 euros for all the I mean the payments for all the procedures and all the bureaucracy to go there in this kind of market is much uh, economic because you can be listed uh, it depends huh? it depends on the the amount of money that you are going to issue but probably you can be an, admitted to the market uh, for also uh, between uh, 20 or around 20, 15, 15 20 thousand and then to pay a, a recurring uh, amount of money for being there and also to 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 have your tokens registered there but around this amount of money like 10 to again 10 to 20 per year which is much much easier than the traditional way of doing that 
All right. So we have like a, a fixed cost in setup usually for tokenizing an asset or for being in your um, platform, in your infrastructure. Uh, and then we will have a maintenance cost to be there and to have transactions and to, to have that liquidity. Yeah, there is. Usually you have an issuance fee, mm -hmm. which usually is less than 1%. And then you also have a trading fee, which is also uh, below. Uh, All right. The minimum and below 1%. So another question, when you talk about regulation for tokens representing participation in an investment vehicle, like angel funds, for, for example, is it globally based or European? How is it evolving among countries? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, each country is developing their own regulation. So for example, in Europe, there is a regulation that has been developed for, the, for, the whole, for all Europe. But uh, the most advanced, uh, let's say, countries, I will say the most advanced countries in the world, uh, from my point of view, uh, will be or what I see as companies that are creating this kind of exchange uh, is Switzerland. They have their own regulation for operating this kind of uh, infrastructure. Also, uh, Singapore, uh, they have been pioneer on that. Europe is being very inno innovative doing that and then in some in some way also the the in some way the united states because they are always innovative but it's like uh, i think that for example the switzerland regulation has been more advanced than the regulation that exists in the in the united states but i'm not expert international in international law so it is my point of view but <laughs> Yeah, I, what I see is that people is choosing very specific, uh, you know, places, yeah. Wyoming or, 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 or Switzerland or, or, or to, and Spain now, right? <laughs> now no, in Spain. Yeah. But. What also happened is that probably there are more small jurisdictions that has developed very specific uh, and very friendly, crypto friendly uh, uh, laws. But what happened with investment is that you need this, uh, I mean, uh, friendly laws, but you also need the, like the, the how you say the, the security for investors to feel comfortable investing their money. So yeah, and stability that things will not change tomorrow. So I create something there, and then you know after six months everything changes and whatnot. Exactly. What should angels fear or be aware of when investing in a tokenized asset? The main things that you would advise, you know, be careful about this, be aware of this, you know, the things that people should, if, if they are aware of it, they will be secure. Yeah. So I think that the first thing is that you understand uh, where are you investing? I mean, uh, a token is a digital representation of something that could have value or could have any value, not value at all. So um, what I mean is a token is a format that uh, provides many advantages, but if the token represents a bad share of a share of a bad company, it is a bad invest investment. Okay. So so the first thing to see is the underlying asset uh, of the token. The second one is that when you buy the token to check and to be sure, sure that when you buy the token, you are really buying the underlying asset. Because so the, the relationship between the underlying asset and the token is guaranteed. For example, when I mentioned this law in Spain that allow you to represent the shares of the company um, in, I mean, with all the legal coverage and to, you are completely sure that I mean, it is a very good step because you are sure that it represents exactly the same that if you go to the notary. And if you go in front of a judge, the judge is going to recognize that. So you, as an investor, you need to be sure that you are buying the real uh, economic right when you buy the token. And the, um, the next thing that I think that you, that you have to, to check is that when you transfer the token, 
I mean, that the tokenization is done in a way that also guarantees you that when you transfer the token, you are also transferring the right. So that you are not transferring part of the right or the token, but the right keeps uh, in the hand of other investor or wherever. That when you transfer the token, you transfer the right. So, and then many, I mean, uh, other questions relate, related to invest, investment in general, but well, if you hold your tokens into a wallet, be careful that uh, you don't, uh, I mean, you keep your keys, your private keys. If you uh, leave your tokens into a custody, be also sure that is, uh, I mean, you can trust the custody. So all these kind of things. <laughs> You talked about a, 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 a little bit about DAOs and Laos. Can you please explain? Because, you know, when we think about an angel fund, an angel group, you know, a group of people investing together in a portfolio of startups, you know, uh, why should we use a DAO and why should we use a Lao? And explain us the difference between those two, please. Yeah. So, well, DAO is a, a decentralized autonomous organization. So all the procedures are like, uh, defining a smart contract and when you sell your funds you sell the funds to a smart contract and when you retire the fund and you have tokens that represent your or portion of I mean your participation in this fund and all these kind of things this is usually the operation of a DAO and it allows very as I said very agile procedures to to invest uh, so in these operations you don't need a traditional organization it is a smart contract that is regulating how all the people are all, all the people are connected, how all those people are sharing assets, how they invest in those assets, how they disinvest from those assets and everything. And the law is a is a company. There is a company, a legal company, company incorporated somewhere, and this legal company established that the way like the rules that regulate how all the investors of the company are going to be related among them and how they are going to invest and how they are going to this this investor everything is regular is uh, operated through this kind of smart contracts so um, it is like um uh, in the second way the law it is using the blockchain technology and it is using all this operation but you have a uh, a legal incorporated company that is the owner, the legal owner of all the assets that are, I mean, operated with this smart contract. But on the other case, you don't have you don't have any legal entity. Okay. How do you differentiate allow from a tokenized LLC? Uh, yeah. So. In fact, the example that I that I show you uh, was exactly the way in which this company tokenized their LLC. So um, it, it is it was a solution. The law was a solution to tokenize their company. It was the solution they found to tokenize their company, and more than that, it was the solution they found to not only tokenize their company but to um, uh, to tokenize their investment strategy together as a group. So besides efficiency and transparency, what could be the key drivers for tokenizing a fund? Does the current cost of tokenization justifies it? Does it need a large amount of assets to be cost effective? So besides efficiency and transparency. Yeah, and um, does the current cost of tokenization justify it? Um, I think so, because we are seeing that the clients that we, I mean, for, in, in our case, in, in our case, we have experienced a very, I mean, interesting uh, phenomenon, <laughs> which is that the, we start um, selling our services mainly to, uh, small and medium companies small companies because they 
they they needed funding and they found that the tokenization allowed them uh, much easier to get from fund, uh, funding from their own community. So uh, the tokenization justify the I mean the cost of the tokenization justify the I mean, it's justified for them yes because it allowed them to to get money to get funding from their own community much uh, easier. Now what happened with institutional investors? Institutional investors who were like more uh, resistant at the beginning to enter this market, not for uh, I mean not not for a cost. Uh, it wasn't because of the cost. It it was because of the regulation, because the regulation was clear was uh, clear enough for them, so the reputation um, was much more worthy than the benefits that they could uh, obtain. Uh, it was re um, regulation and also the custody of the assets. Once these two questions are uh, solved, we are seeing that all the institutions that we we contact, like last year and two years ago, and they are coming back uh, looking for new ways to introduce these technologies. Uh, and then because well, so uh, it is not a it is it is not. Um, it is not a cost-intensive activity. It's not really. It's not very expensive. And uh, now, uh, during I mean, this year and last year, or may, maybe during the last few years, probably has been a little bit more expensive. But not for the cost of the technology. It's been more expensive for the know-how that you needed to implement it. So you needed to to hire consultants and lawyer and everything to to implement it that when the regulation is clear and the technology is mature uh, is is not really very it's not it's not very expensive the opposite yeah. it's help you uh, uh, lower your cost <laughs>if you have investors from different countries can you do it all on chain or do you also need uh contracts no no if it is if you have a law that say that your token represent the economic right let's say the token represent the share it represent the share you don't need to you don't need the contract or you don't need the go to the notary you need to buy the token it's like title say i mean if you if you give you um a 20 dollar paper you have the twenty dollars. That's it's yours. So it's like here you you buy the token, you buy the share. If you are from any other country and you and you buy shares from a company in Spain, it is regulated. Your right is regulated by the I mean the law in which the company is incorporated. So let's say in Spain. Now, if in any country you need to to present to the authority of your own country any I don't know tax certificate. Or wherever, then I don't know for any for 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 all the countries. But in any case, the company could pro, pro, could provide you that certificate because you own the title legally. So, uh, I mean, you own the legal right. Uh, if we want to tokenize an angel fund. You know what token city can do for us if you take care of the entire process what you do in the process and what what we need to to do by ourselves yeah so we first we need to we need to understand how you are doing your procedure today so how are you signing contract with your clients and to see i mean how this contract could be replaced but uh digitize operations uh, in the blockchain and also we need to understand in which regulation or each of the group is operating because their regulation in different countries are going to be i mean limit your uh, self in in different ways uh, in general terms if you are operating in a private basis i mean you are not uh, gathering money publicly and you are not trading publicly you could, for example, sign like uh, uh, contractors, like private contracts that represent, you sign a contract with investors and you sign with them that, and you provide them tokens that represent the part, in, the amount in which they participated in the invest in the investment and also uh, in which part they will participate in the 
exit of the, I mean, the earning of the exit of the company. So you provide uh, investors with the token that represent, I mean, the right on each specific invest investment. Also, a, a different way to do it is that instead of uh, tokenizing each invest investment, you could tokenize the participation in the group as a group, because maybe some group groups are operating, uh, I mean, as a, uh, creating a portfolio of, in of investments, not just investment by investment. So the similarity there will be to just like uh, signing a contract or, or just tokenizing the shares of the group that is investing, the company that is investing in different startups. So it depends on how each group is organized. Uh, depending on that, you can create different vehicles, tokenized vehicles to, to help investors to hold tokens that represent shares on the investment or shares on the investment group.